Hey y'all, Miss Mayhew here, and I am going to go over incomplete and co-dominance with you guys. Um, the reason that we're going to talk about this is because these are two examples of inheritance patterns that deviate from Mendel's observations. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is incomplete dominance. So incomplete dominance is a type of inheritance pattern where one allele is not completely expressed over the other one. So one allele is not completely expressed over the other. Okay, so the example that I'm going to give you guys um, are actually snapdragons. I'll see what I can do in a second to get a picture on here. I think I can figure out some kind of editing. But um, there's three different phenotypes that are observed in snapdragons. And the genotypes that go with them are um, RR. So if there is a snapdragon that has two red alleles, that snapdragon is going to be red. If there are two white alleles, so if it's WW, then it is going to be white. Okay, now where it gets interesting is if you have one red allele and one white allele. So red is not going to be completely expressed over the white, or white's not going to be completely expressed over the red. So it's going to give you this um, incomplete or in between or intermediate color which would be pink in this case. Um, on <clears throat> questions two and three you can actually get those from the sickle cell anemia video from earlier this semester so I'm gonna let you guys get on that <laughs> but on number four I'll go over co-dominance with you guys. So co-dominance is another one of those inheritance patterns that differs from Mendelian genetics um, <clears throat> in the fact that both of the alleles would be fully expressed. So in incomplete dominance, neither of them are completely expressed over the other, but in co-dominance, they're both going to be expressed fully. So <clears throat> both alleles are fully expressed. Okay, so there's two examples that I want to give you guys. Um, the first one is going to be a little easier for you guys to see and recognize, and I'll see what I can do about putting a picture on here. But <clears throat> um, I'll talk about uh, freckled hens. So freckled hens come in three phenotypes. Um, the first one would be if you have two black alleles, then that hen or rooster is going to be black. If you have two white alleles, so big W, big W, it's going to be white. And where it gets interesting is if you have one black allele and one white allele. So in codominance, they're both going to be fully expressed. So it's going to fully express both black and white alleles. So you'll end up with a chicken that has both black and white feathers. So it's going to be black and white. Okay, the second example, I'm going to talk about our blood types. So go ahead and move on to number five. Um, we're talking about the genotypes for A-type blood, B-type blood, AB-type blood, and O-type blood. Okay, so um, the genotypes that are possible for A-blood. So first let me explain what A-blood is. So A-blood is going to be blood that has um, the A antigen on the surface of it. Okay, the fancy sciencey word for those antigens that we're talking about is isoagglutinogen. They are going to have 
at least one um, A antigen in their genotype. So they could have two of these um, isoagglutinogen A's, or they could have one isoagglutinogen A and one of the recessive no antigen. So <clears throat> this is also an example of multiple alleles. Typically, you're used to seeing um, two options for an allele, um, like up here, either red or white. Okay, but in blood type, uh, we have multiple alleles, so we have more than two options. So we actually have three options. We have this um, A, which would be dominant um, or codominant, and then we have the recessive I for O, which would be no antigens. So B blood type is going to have the B antigen on the surface. So it could have IB, IB, or IB little i. So this is going to have, whoop, I can't write, A antigens. <laughs> this one is going to have B antigens. Okay, for AB blood, um, it's codominant, so we are going to have one IA and one IB. So it's going to express both the A antigen and the B antigen on the surface. So this one has A and B antigens because it's codominant. They're both expressed. Okay, the fourth blood type is O blood, okay, and that is going to have two of the recessive I's, okay, so it can't have an A because it would end up expressing an A antigen, and it can't have a B because it's going to end up expressing a B antigen. Those are both codominant, but they're both dominant to this recessive I, which codes for no isoagglutinogen, so that would be none of those ant antigens. All right, so that pretty much sums it up. Make sure that you're able to do Punnett squares with these different um, types of inheritance patterns in order to predict offspring.